Good evening. How many of us are grateful for God's mercy? So, my name is um, Pastor Kia Hunt. Um, I want to um, first give honor to God for this opportunity. Um, um, I thank him for whatever it is that he sees in me. Um, because I don't feel qualified to be here. But nevertheless, there's an assignment. Um, as we know, also, I'm sorry, also I want to give honor to our pastors, Pastor Reggie and Terry Rogers. We love you guys. We thank you for this opportunity as yes. well. I thank you for whatever it is that you see in me that trust me to do this. Um, we know that um, regardless of what we say and how we fight, God gets the final say. Yes. Um, so I want to just go before him in prayer before I get started. Father God, we come this evening, um, first God, thanking you for being who you are. I thank you, Father, for um, just giving me your strength to be able to stand here. And Father, I pray that um, the people see you and not me. Um, I have nothing to give them. Only you is the only thing that I have to give them. So Father, I pray um, this prayer in your name. Amen. 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 Um, as we know, um, we have been studying from Mark 5. Um, and our series is called Pigs Are Slave, Mark by the Beast. And our um, leader, Pastor Reggie, he has given us so much to feast on during the week in those messages. Um, I am going to um, just go into um, what God gave me. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask my loving husband to read um, Mark 5, and if you'll go all the way down, one through um, talking about, we know that previous to or prior to um, Jesus getting to the um, where this man is, there was a storm that accelerated them there. Um, and the disciples were kind of hesitant to get on the boat to go back you know, to go somewhere else because they had just come through that storm. And um, 
And in that, um, Pastor Reggie, one of the points he made in the, um, one of the previous um, messages was to, one, um, in, when you're in a storm, watch what God is doing. Yes. God was asleep during that storm. Yes. And that is definitely a, I guess, a stand or a, a point that I try to live in. I try to live that. Um, I don't I don't do everything right. I don't get it right. But I try to stay calm regardless of the situation. I try to look at the God in the situation because it's so easy to turn to the to the negative part of it. Um, but like I say for me watching or knowing that God can sleep through a storm. I, I try my best to sleep through a storm. Um, and, you know, in order to do that, it's, um, it takes tenacity. It takes resilience to, you know, study his word and to get it so deep down on the inside of you that when, when those times come up, that you can stand or you can sleep, whatever it is that you need to do in those moments. Um, it's nothing but his strength that I'm standing here right now. Um, I lost my aunt, my mother's sister, my aunt this morning. Um, found out she passed away this morning. Um, she had been suffering, so I thank God that she is now transitioned and she's, you know, she's free, she's healed. But it's tough. You know, to stand here and so, like I said, again, his peace um, is with me in this moment to be able to stand here and to complete um, the assignment. Um, another point that was given to us was your mind is a neutral place for productive or destructive thoughts. Again, that goes to what it is that you allow to to penetrate your being, whether it be through your eyes, through your ears, the things that even come out through your words, um, we have to watch what we say. Um, I, my, I talk to my husband a lot um, during certain things. You know, certain times he'll he'll say, "Well, this ain't gonna be, or this is not going to be like this." And I'm like, "Well, you don't, you know." But you have to watch what you say because your words take form. Right. As we know, what we add, I am to, or we become that. Yeah. So we have to watch those things that we put out into the atmosphere. Um, another point was um, worship is the key to any mental prison. We all worship in different ways. My worship may not look like your worship. What I do to enter in may not be what you do to enter in, but as long as you find that space, you make that time, you set that time apart, whether it be early in the morning, late at night, in the midday, set that time, set that appointment with him, and you make sure you keep it. Because that's how we gain our strength, that's how we gain our wisdom, the, the times where we feel like very inadequate, like I do, you know, like I said, I don't really feel right. Um, anyway, to God be the glory. Um, he's, he has given me, he's given me everything that I need. Um, I think last Wednesday we were talking about, um, he talked about we can't use our five senses to try the spirit. We have to use really our sixth sense, which is discernment, to, um, to, to, to do that. And on Sunday, um, Pastor Anthony gave us um, ways to know whether it was God or Satan, you know, to, to know who was talking to us. Um, and I, wanted, I want to read, um, I'm going to read. Galatians 5, where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. 
because we know the fruits of the spirit are fruit of God's spirit. So when when the uh, voices we hear, when the thoughts that are put into our mind, even to the decisions we're making, if it's, if it's not producing the fruits of the spirit, then it would be of the flesh or of Satan. Because we know that no good thing dwells in our flesh. So um, I'm going to read. Galatians 5, 22, um, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no to where it talks about the manifestation of the flesh, which, um, 19, it says, now the works, the works of the flesh are manifest which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, maliciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedation, uh, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past time, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, which would mean they are not of God. So when we are making decisions or when those thoughts come, because that's where, where, we, where we're dealing with is the mind, because the man in the tombs, his mind was being tormented, and he was being tormented, and he was possessed by a legion of de demons, which means... Over 6,000 demons had this man, they sent him away to an island of dead people. He was in the tombs um, with dead things. Um, so it makes you think, or it, it raises the thought, um, you know, if we allow Satan to give us thoughts and we, we we ponder on those thoughts, or we meditate on those thoughts. Are we putting ourselves in the place of dead people? Or are we surrounding ourselves, or allowing ourselves to be around dead things, dead people, dead situations, dead thinking, even for that matter? Um, so that was just the thought that came to me. Um, so tonight, I really just want to give us a few tools, put us, you know, give us a few scriptures, because we know that um, praying in the spirit could be our heavenly language, or it could be the word of God, and um, this morning, I was talking to AJ, um, he has, sometimes he has bad dreams, and I tell him, you know, when those moments come, when you have a bad dream, you you remember this scripture. I said, and if you can't remember this scripture, then you just call on Jesus. You know, you call on God and he'll He'll give you peace. He'll You ask him for what you need and he'll give it to you. Um, so the first one that I want to go to is, um, uh, okay. yes, yeah, Second Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I tell them to repeat that, and if you can't, even if you can't remember every word of that, God knows his word, and you use that, you pray that to give you strength, to gain the power over those thoughts that try to overtake your mind to make you feel less than, or to make you feel unloved, or to make you feel like you're not worthy of God's love. Um, the next one is Joshua 1. Yes, 
Thank you. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whither, whithersoever thou goest. That means wherever you go, whatever you do. Keep the mind, keep courage, and keep, be not afraid, because God is with you. Um, the second or the next one is um, Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And again, these are just scriptures that you can pull out of your toolbox to cover your mind when the enemy is attacking your mind to bring you peace or you know you to bring a settle to your to your spirit. These spirits, I mean, these are these scriptures will definitely lead you to God. Um, Isaiah twenty six and three. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust God. Isaiah what? Isaiah 26 and 3. One of my favorite scriptures is Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. So I'm going too fast, y'all. Slow me down. First um, Peter, cha um, chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be yes. sober, and hope to the end for the for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, Philippians four and eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of a good report, if there be any virtue, virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And that was one of the scriptures I gave to AJ this morning. And um, in, in preparation, I, you know, been praying, you know, God give me what I need to say, what you want me to say to the people. And in talking to him, I heard him say, that's it. Yeah. You know, like, and I was telling, you know, telling Anthony, I was like, I, I feel like I'm, my mind going to explode because I'm thinking about, you know, my mom, because she was up um, with my aunt. And so I'm thinking about her, and I'm thinking about trying to get ready for this, and got to get this done, and got to get that done. But he called me before he got off work, and he said, you okay? I said, no. <laughs> you know, not really. Um, he was like, what's wrong? And I said, well, I got I got this, but I don't feel like it's enough. So I, I said, I got so much in me that I want to write it down, but I, I couldn't write it down. I could not write it down on paper. Everything that, other than a few notes, is coming from here. And I feel like that's the, that's the best thing. You know? um, so... I hope that I hope that you guys got something from this. I have a few more scriptures um, to give, and I'll we'll, we can open it up for a dialogue um, just to kind of you know talk about some things. But um, let me see. Um, Psalms ninety-five. I'm sorry, ninety-four and nineteen. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts, thy comforts delight my soul. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think so I'm going to open up the floor. What What are your guys? What are you guys' thoughts on um, 
or your takeaways from what we have been learning from past, from just the message series, period? Yeah, so I think one of the main things I've taken away from from this series so far is that even, even to the extent of this man being isolated with his thoughts, there, there is a space for redemption, right? Even with all that he was dealing with and the thousands of demons that were plaguing him, um, Jesus still met him where he was. Was like, hey. Like, just relax. It's okay. You know, this is not the end of your of your days. This is not the end of your life. It's just you have been you have, you have been tormented by something that was not your fault. But now it is your responsibility. Although that is unfortunate, now let me bring you into what redemption looks like. So that's been my take, one of the main takeaways so far in this series, and I think just the overall point of, although there may be tormenting thoughts in the mind, it is not the end of the world. It is not the end. Bad days are not the end. Extended bad moments are not the end. Because even with this man, Jesus, Jesus brought something to him that he didn't know previously. So that is a beautiful thing. Um, so. I'm looking forward to learning more. I think even what you mentioned tonight, a great lesson, by the way. Thank you. Amen. 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 Here at the Pentecostal Church. Amen. Uh, <laughs> but that scripture you mentioned in Isaiah, that's, listen, that's one of my favorite about perfect peace, right? Yes. You know, yeah. You know, because peace, peace is something that should be consistent. Absolutely. Even with what's going on. And in, ironically, the man in Mark was, though he was tormented, he was still, he, there was something in his natural self, even with all these legions of demons, there was something in him looking for that Isaiah 26 3. So I think the encouragement to us and um, going forward would be less plug into those moments of peace because it's there to help us and I'm definitely talking to myself as well just being intentional with peace and letting it wearing it like a good coat in the winter wearing that peace like a good coat so amen thank you so much talking about salvation and he said that salvation is a, a acquiescing which means basically surrendering a mental surrendering process a process that you go through daily so you said that you know he was put in a situation it wasn't his fault that he was there but it was his responsibility to make the steps or to do what needed to be done, you know, to get freedom. And, you know, I think I think that's also made the point that, you know, bound people want to be free. Come on, man. You know, they want to be free, even to, you know, the things that bound that I may be bound by. I want to be free from those things. And it may not be to the severity of me being isolated and cutting myself and you know, doing those type of things, but there are certain things in my life that I do feel bound by, and I want freedom. You know, I want freedom from those things, and I pray that I do everything that I need to do to walk out that process to be free.
process of maintaining peace. And I think it's safe to do it. Making sure that um, we're doing what we need, doing what we're supposed to do to maintain our peace. So whether it is words that we're saying or the thoughts that we think, or the people that we're around, or the people that we allow to, to if I can say, unload on us, uh, we have to be careful that there's a lot of times that's being, even though, you know, yes, Nothing wrong with being there for somebody, but when you constantly have people to unload and drop them in, and you know, put put their, give you that trash, it um, it it's a, it's a it becomes a uh, fetter at in itself, um, and not necessarily to your to your feet, but like I'm saying, to your mind. It was, it was huge. Um, I think most of what you talk about today is specific what the Bible was talking about. It's a book that's really talking about the mind. I don't think Jesus really assaulted actions. He came to assault thought, the mind, uh, the thoughts that the, the Pharisees, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were having. Uh, the mind, the, the, the point to renew the mind, to take the back or to extend the, the mind. I you know that's where the battle place begins. I feel like what what took place um, with the guy in the tomb that Pastor was talking about. Yes. If you notice it, if you look at it analytically, it was worship was the gateway, and then if we know who Jesus is, he's the manifested word, and when Jesus went to free people. Did it with this audible spoken word that our freedom with worship being the gateway to get us there is what we ingest in the word. He said, That word that I hid in our heart that I may not sin against you, and it's that crafted word that's able to save our soul. And the teachings of pastor and the word is soul comes from what sushi, you know, what, I mean? yeah. what speaks to the psyche, the mind. And what's crazy about how the enemy tax us, we don't know. We see it manifest as fruit as an action, but it starts as a seed in the mind. Right. So to be due diligence of what we allow to enter into it, even when he said we, faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of God, that, that words that we hear out of it goes into our psyche and to plant seeds. Yeah. Even to what we see visually. Yes, even to Touch makes all those senses that lead to the soul. But how we're able to cleanse those is to really ingest as much work we can and we can put in and then become red men, living the physical, become uh, the tangible expression of it. And then, believe it or not, we become our own doctors by utilizing the word. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. passes on it, and that's how the enemy works. Demons come to attack the mind. They, yeah, they, 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 do. they don't care about our finances. <laughs> they can't spend money. Yeah, they don't. They what, is, what is money, money to them? Nothing. What it's is our money mind. to say? Because that's where we, that's where our treasure is. Yep. That's our kingdom. That's our promised land. You know? Amen. 
They pay us not for our time taken. They pay us for our mind. That's right. And what we can do with it to accomplish the task. Yes. They don't pay us for our time. That's what they tell us. Mm -hmm. They pay us for what our mind can do in that time. Absolutely. Yes. So that's how people can charge what they charge. It's what's between their head. Yes. And I just want to thank you for your obedience today. You could have been like, I'm not doing this. Um, so that truly ministered to me. Um, being obedient. Thank um, you for the tools that you provided. And what really stuck out to me is um, you said putting ourselves in the place of dead people when we meditate on the sacred work. Um, so that stuck out to me. Um, and overall, one thing, I mean, all of it's been good, but what Anthony said last week about um, the ciphering of the voices um, this week. We got a little try in the weekend. I've had to implement, you know, what you were teaching about about um, deciphering between um, God's voice, which is love, um, Satan's voice, which is uh, what is it? Can I you manage? Sure. I would, yeah. And then our voice, which is typically, you know, and rooted in emotion. So that really yes. So both of you have blessed me. Testing one, two. Uh, when you talk about uh, transfer and renewal of the mind, uh, you know, we have to uh, keep our mind stand on the Lord because um, when we, it's a, well, I say it's a trial, you know, every time on uh, travel, when we have to keep our mind on the Lord because uh, we encourage them to um, have a, uh, have a uh, fear in our mind, but we know nothing can't harm us from it, but keeping our strength because reading the word and standing the word that's going to make us um, more of it to, you know, like people stand like ugly and all that and long suffering. Oh, yes. So, I mean, if we do this, we still have to suffer with the Lord because we know it's, it's that's our bandage and, uh, and stand with him and believe in him. And then that's our daily, that's our daily wait, you know, when we stay in prayer and, you know, and that's the way he's going to keep us is, we keep, uh, you know, uh, apply His word to our life, and that's and that's the more time to get and uh, and have confidence, and, you know, standing His will Absolutely. and doing His will. Absolutely. Thank you. That's all I have. Um, there was one more scripture that I forgot to give you guys, and this is another one of my favorites. It's Ephesians six and twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So again, all of the scriptures that were given tonight, um, we can use when our mind is being attacked. Um, Second Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power yes. love and a sound mind. Sound mind. Some translations say um, self-discipline. Yes. And in self-discipline, like I say, we have to we have to discipline ourselves, as yes. you know, Brandon said, to feed ourselves the word, so that we can become those those walking disciples, so that somebody else, whoever it is that we encounter, that they don't encounter us, they encounter God. Yeah. And that's that's my prayer daily, that that whoever comes into my path, they see Him, not me. Um, that in, in the mornings, I, God, I'm an empty pitcher. You fill me with your spirit so that I can do what you want me to do today. I don't want to be in me. I want to be in you. Yeah. And you in me. So, you got something? I just had one more thing. Uh, it's kind of random. But I was thinking about how, you know how, like, when our, our physical bodies take uh, damage or or something like that. Um, and a lot of things, you know, how the, the whole biology of our, of our bodies is that the cells, you know, they uh, heal themselves. Um, but I was thinking about it as far as in a spiritual way, um, even in the storms and the different uh, 
torments and pains that we that we go through, but the, like and taking in the word and, and knowing where to go and knowing how to knowing how to uh, uh, knowing what place what place needs to be healed. Um, the word is that same thing as self is to our body. So, so the word is healing us spiritually, and I and helping us, uh, with helping us get our minds together. You know, that, like I said, it was something I was thinking about. Uh, something so, going to say, um, Sister Lee, So there's a scripture that talks about a person that doesn't have a rule of their own spirit would be like a city without walls, meaning it can be easily conquered. The, the point of us being a spirit being, living a natural life in a human body, is to know we're, we're spirit being first, and then we're connected and tethered to this world. So if this is technically not our home, we need to be adopted with the culture of where we come from. So it becomes, and should be become, should come, should be the standard that we filter everything through. The most success I've seen is individuals using kingdom principles. So if it if it tells us that a situation of, uh, give me an example, an offense or whatever it is, that there's a manner in which you do it to where it can resolve that offense or that particular issue to where you guys, uh, we can move in a way that brings the best results. I feel like the, the, the Bible is one of the most practical books out there. And it, sh it has individual instructions for everything that we can come against, uh, that comes for us. It should be our first go-to. And because we have been cultured and doctored in the ways of the world, it operates opposite of what the kingdom mindset is. It talks about people that's trying to, you know, be promoted. They think the way up is up. And the way up is down. <laughs> the way up is down. It says, okay, if you want to be wealthy, give. And it, it, it didn't specify, you know, specifically the word I looked at, what to give and how to give. But it said tells you to give. And with the mindset of having a giving heart, when you need it, it'll come back to you. It said, press down, shut together, run and go. Men. So uh, it gives you principles, but the way the world teaches us is to have, is to save, keep. You have a rope, store up. No. So to 
the, the whole mindset of renewing, recalibrating, resetting our thought process, if there's an area in which the enemy attacks us and is often successful, what me and my wife do, we try to create safeguards while we're in the process of reconditioning our mind of how we look at a thing. So we can do a thing differently, not try the same thing over and over expecting different results, but try to tweak it or to utilize the work in our situation. For, for me, if you're a transparent moment, and uh, there's kids in here. Well, there's a thing that men do growing up in their adolescence that can carry on to their adult life. So we'll keep it in that context. And for me, that was something that has been a process for me working myself out of since I was 11. So that gives it 20, 21, 22 years of longevity in my life. What I've done now, since I've been married and to be transparent and honest with my wife, hey, this is there I need you to help me with. And now instead of me allowing the enemy to trap me into something that causes so much rebound, re uh, fall back, and that not only hinders and, and hurts me, but my household, I, I lean towards this, the strength of, of, of the unity of my helpmate that brings success. And so far, I've, 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 me personally, me spiritually, I, I see 21 days creates new habit, 90 days creates a lifetime change. My mindset is to create a habit to a lifestyle change to where it's not an issue anymore. Mr. J says something, he says something you just have to outlive. But if it's something like a thorn in your side, there's some things you have to outlive. But then if it's within the realm of the, the way God brings it to you, will let you know how important he wants you to change it. If it's one of those things to where you see you can't live, you can't live with it, you need to move, he has given us tools. If he hasn't changed it, or removed it for us to do it ourselves. And that's it. Um, can I add to that? Um, I think it uh, also has something to do with maturity. And the reason why I say that because sometimes we don't know how strong we really are until certain things come or we don't really know what, we, what it is that we need to work on until it gets some pressure to us. So I feel like sometimes things are still able to come through. Um, sometimes it's necessary um, to see is this, is this an area where we need to work on, still work on, or have we, have we progressed? to go to the next level. So that's why I say I think this have also has something to do with the, the maturity um, of your, not only your spiritual life, but your physical as well. Yeah, a little bit, because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm listening to all that, but then I'm like, like, well, for one, when Anthony said the, about the maturity, how and things come, and then we know what, but we know what when he was saying uh, about it being something that we possibly need to work on, is it that we just need to work on just calling it what it is? It's, it's like, because when it goes back to Brendan, when he mentioned about, um, I use for instance, events, you can tell just look at somebody or if you know the situation, if somebody was offended. So we know what to do when events takes place. So how does it get to us? that person is just at their end before, but we know in, in how to handle that. Is it because they need 